I want to I want to pull up this this audio from the guy that they said Remy, no. the rapper that Remy is having the affair with. I'm going to just preface this by saying I don't think that Papoose and Remy are actually together. And I don't think they've been together for a while. I think ever since this shit has been public, it's been given that they're not together. And I think that this might have been the last straw for them to just announce that they aren't together anymore. I also cannot stand the fact that everybody thinks because Papoose held Remy down when she was in prison, which I don't know what y'all think that means, but that's supposed to mean not fuck anybody else. And if y'all think Papoose didn't fuck anybody else in those eight years, y'all are insane. I absolutely think he fucked other people. It was just people who would keep the secret and who would not come out and say anything, okay? And there are women out there who will. There are women out there who love men. And there are women out there that are getting paid an adequate amount of money. There are women that don't want their face broke by the woman once she get out of jail. So, you know, you you you, you may not know why Remy went to jail. But I think it was because she stabbed the bitch in the stomach. Either stabbed a shot, but something something happened. Child, I can't remember now. I can't remember whether it was a stab or a shot. But she served all eight years for the, the shit. <laughs> so, yeah, it is given you may not want to, like, have this story come out. But, yeah, no, I, I feel like stabbed, okay, which is so much worse. Stabbing somebody is so much worse than shooting them. <laughs> like, I'm just saying you actually got to, like, ah, like, knife it in. Um, but you know, you do what you got to do. Either way, I don't think they're together. I do think it's sad that she gets caught out there with this goofy ass nigga that obviously seems to be a clout chaser. But again, whenever there are successful women, just as I said with Super, it's going to be so hard for them to ever find niggas that are not clout chasers. I didn't need like, bro, you, bro, you corny and shit, bro. And he corny. And he just corny. So I feel like that, you know what I mean? He deserves some pressure too. I feel like tagging a nigga, yo, Pat, yo, I, yo, I, yo, you since, since real niggas do real things, tag Pat Pool. Yo, are you going to clear this allegation up or do you want, or do you want to get me to? Well, I will kill that nigga, bro. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, fuck are you talking about, nigga? I'm not going to go into y'all personal business because I told her that's what she should do. Like, but. I'm putting the pressure on This board. is a battery rap traffic exclusive. Yeah, I'll let that linger out. He don't got to answer it, but it's going to linger to the point that they're going to be expecting me to say something. I'm going to tell you why. Because back in the day, there was no social media. There was no internet validation to get. Now people get validation from social media. So the validation that they would have been trying to get from the person they now can get it somewhere else. So the person is not as important because now they can make themselves almost just as famous or as important as the person by simply outing the story. Back in the day, it used to be like, oh, just being in this, per this person's vicinity is enough, you know, because if I tell, then I'm going to be ostracized. Nowadays, you can get online and make yourself famous from telling somebody's mess. And so because of that, they no longer have the incentive to stay quiet. Back in the day, people were incentivized to stay quiet because they didn't want to be ostracized from the lifestyle or from being around those people. Now you can get online and make your own self famous from this type of bullshit. So that's why these new side chicks and side dudes talk too fucking much. But let's continue. Declare it up or say, no, nigga, I beat you the fuck up or some shit like that. You need to say something. You need to say it don't. Have, I don't. It don't even have to be in my favor. It is in my favor because once you say anything that I don't like, then I go live and boom, it's over. Man, listen. She she said, yo, this is what she she don't want me to. She don't want me to. No lie. You know what I mean? She been on my ass like asking me like, please don't do it. I'm like, all right, copy. Let me tell you. But she also said this nigga made the first move. He put you in a fucked up position. So I can't tell you what to do. I'm just asking you because you do that for me. But I keep saying, but what is he doing? If that's the case, why am I the only person doing something for you? Why he not though? That nigga the one who got 16 in, right? Talking about he held you down from jail. He the one that got 16 years in. Why this nigga not holding you down? This is a battle rap trap exclusive. Like, the nigga, all, he could have stopped all of that shit with a tweet. That same night when she made a draw, I made a draw, he could have made a draw. 
boom. Anything else that niggas would have ran with would have been on them. I wouldn't have had to say nothing. I wouldn't have had to have to force myself to go live. None of that shit, bro, because everybody spoke already. The fact that she said something, I said something, and you didn't, that make it look weird. The fact that you posted real niggas do real things the next day, make it look weird. The fact that you posted a Father's Day picture without her, make it look weird. This is a better rap. So I think what he's saying is, they everybody knows they're not together. That's what I think he's saying. He's saying the nigga fucked up because, because that's what he's saying. Like, why wouldn't you get up online and squash the shit or say whatever you was going to say? You put more fire on it. And I think it's because at the end of the day, Pat Poos probably didn't want to break up. But him and Remy are broken up. And the dude knows they're broken up. Pat Poos knows they're broken up. Pat Poos knows about the dude. That's what I think. And so that's why the dude is like, nigga, why wouldn't you squash the shit? Instead, you throwing fire on it. And now you asking me to come out and say that ain't shit happen. Why he ain't doing it? And then it, to me, it just kind of seemed like Remy around a whole bunch of puss ass niggas. <laughs> that's what it seemed like to me. Because I really feel like it's obvious that her and Pap is not together by the time this stuff comes out. Traffic's I can't go live. Speculation. He fucked up. He waiting for this. Yo, he got beat up. Not knowing, niggas don't really, niggas starting to try to figure it out like, yo, he fucking with Remy, but not knowing that I really, I've been with Shorty and she not, she telling me though. Niggas don't know that she's been at my crib since then. And that's what Oz is saying. Oz is like, hey, you the only nigga right now that's sacrificing your career. I mean, she getting killed too, so, but he like, she can just end that shit, but she still, at the end of the day, man, I know what it is. She not saying this is what it is, but I know what it is. She don't want the. She don't want this was about to happen. Nigga, this little bullshit right now is already hitting her, stressing her out. We like she not in there. Like, bro, you, bro, you corny and shit. Bro. That's what I'm saying. Like, cause it, I'm reading it right here. It says. That Easy feels as though he was the only one who had Remy's back to defuse the situation, but Pap is fueling the rumors with all the shady posts despite being 16 years in. And the only way you would expect a nigga to defuse the situation is if he already knew what it was. Yeah, he's one of the um one of her battle rap artists. So that's what I like. The nigga's lame, but the nigga's on the phone with his homeboy. I don't think the nigga was trying to put this out. I think he was on the phone with somebody he thought he could trust and the person put his business out there on Front Street. To me, it sounds like what he's saying is Pap knew that they wasn't together, but confronted the nigga on some, you know, jealous shit. And he moving from a jealous pa place because he wants to still be together. But I think Remy has already said, I don't want to be together anymore. That's what it seemed like to me. I could be wrong. Um... But for him to be expecting Pap to defuse the situation, that's because Pap already knew what it was to me. Um, yeah, that nigga's beard is very weird. Um, as much as I like Remy, he's mad Pap not paying him any attention. I don't think that's what it is. Um, as much as I like Remy and Pap, they were just double too much, like with the black love phase. And I think that was more him than her. And she was just going along with it. But I think he started to really get a big head off of people always praising him for holding her down. He had to force himself to go live. Pat Poos just played them all. No, Pat Poos just played them all. Okay. He had to force himself to go live. Okay. There's some sucker-ish to go online and spray your I See, I don't think he meant to spray it. I don't think he meant to spray it. Game has been played and Pat Poos pulled the ace. Yeah, I think that Pat Poos, like, like, you know, kind of wanted Remy to look bad. But essentially, I think he knew that they weren't together. Like, that's what it seemed like to me. Um, I've always felt like Pat Poos was more into Remy than Remy was into Pat Poos. I mean, honestly, that's kind of how it's supposed to be. But don't <laughs> don't ask me um, to an extent, to an extent, to an extent. Um, but to me, I don't know if it was he was more into her or if he was getting off on the praise he was getting from their relationship. Do we know if there was cheating involved? See, that's what I'm saying. People think that she was cheating with this dude, but I don't think she was cheating with this dude. I think her and Poos was broke up and she was fucking with this dude. Pat might have known about him or might not have known about him. But either way, 
I don't think Remy was showing up to their battle rap matching this nigga if her and Pap was still together. Like, I just don't believe that's what was happening. And on top of the fact that he's saying on the audio that he was expecting Papoose to, to defuse the situation, that's what made me feel like Papoose knew that they, like him and Remy wasn't together and it wasn't a cheating situation, but he also is mad about it. So he going to play you out. Yeah, he wanted her to look bad. That's what it seemed like to me. I really hate to believe that Pat is a whole ass ninja, but I don't know. Like, what he do? I don't know. I don't know. He was more into her and she was into him. Them getting married seems like she wanted inside dick, honestly, because, again, he never had her son and that's holding somebody down. I, I agree. I agree. Um, I think Remy has been done with her marriage for a minute. Me too. Me too. I feel like Remy wanted the baby in black love status, not Pat. I don't think so. I think she, I think when you went, she went in jail, she wanted him. And I think when she got out, she felt obligated to make it work and give him that baby. And I think once she gave him the baby and realized that that shit wasn't going to work, she had to let it go. But now y'all got black love and y'all got everybody y'all financially invested into y'all's relationship and shit. I think it makes it harder to let somebody go. Um... But I don't even think she wanted the black love status. I don't even think that was something that she wanted like that. I think she wanted to give him what he wanted because she felt obligated to, Um, to be real. I agree. I felt that he was more invested into their image, especially when they were. Yes, I think so, too. Um, Can we watch the Love and Marriage Huntsville trailer? Um, Yeah, we can. Uh, Remy didn't want to have a baby after she got out. She really wanted to wait to have a child. I mean, and she did. She did wait, but she ended up giving him the child. I just think y'all relationships run their course, but it really do seem to me that they wasn't cheating as much as they weren't telling everybody that they were broken up. But you know, child, we'll see. Either way, let's go ahead and move on, girl. We're going to move on because y'all have been giving Trina the blues this week. So... It started off with Trina doing this. Why do you think now is the time? Like, what do you think there's something specific that happened in, in music and culture that kind of opened the landscape for more female rappers to rise to the top? Yeah, Beyonce. Because she's like the number one female rapper when she does rap. So I feel like... I feel Listen, like this is it. People do sleep on Beyonce when oh, she no. does fit. There's no sleeping on the queen, okay? There's no sleeping <laughs> on the queen. Um, it's just one of those things like, of course, this is the queen's Beyonce. But when you hear her do a song and it's rapping involved, it's like, oh my God. Like, it just, it's, it's more inspiration and... um. I don't know. It's just a good thing, man. I just I feel like for the girls now, and when you hear them and when you look at them, it's just all different kind of music, and it all yeah. sounds different. And you know, um, we all come from different places, almost kind of like the same, same kind of you know bring, upbringing. But then you just branch out, and you just have different. You know, everybody's from a different city, different state, have a different struggle, different hustle, different yeah. you know story to tell. So you know, I just love to see it and hear it, even if it may not be the best to whoever to some of us. But when you look at it, you appreciate it more because it's like a thing. Why do you think now is the time? Like, what do you think there's something specific that happened in, in music and culture that kind of opened the landscape for more female rappers to rise to the top? Yeah, Beyonce. Okay. So to me, Trina knows that they wanted her to say Nikki. But because she is tired, I think at this point of giving Nikki props and Nikki being the industry mean girl i don't think she wanted to say nikki and she thought that saying beyonce was a safe choice because normally whenever anybody praises beyonce everybody loves it and would just let it fly but because the barbs are psychos anytime somebody is not praising Nicki minaj they have to come and argue some point they have to argue girl and i, I had to tell somebody on twitter girl i don't care I don't care. I know you think that we should all care. I know you're, you know, typing in all caps. I know you're really angry about all of this. And honestly, I want you to get a life. I want you to get a life. It doesn't even matter. Nobody cares. Nobody cares. I think Miami, I mean, I think uh, Trina was just trying to not kiss ass. Like, not say Nikki, because at this point, I don't want to say Nikki. And to say Beyonce. 
But as I would say on my live, I said on my Instagram live, everybody forgets that Beyonce doing um, no, 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 no was like really an entrance to R&B being rap like. Boy, I know you want me. I can see it in your eyes. Watch, keep on front. It won't you say what's on your mind. Because each and every time you near me, you give me signs. But when I ask you what's the deal, you hold it all inside. If you want to be with me, you got to keep it real. Tell me what's going on. Tell me how you feel. Like before before that song, before No, No, No came out in general, R&B was more singy and not as sped up as that. When Beyonce decided to do like that, sped up remix version to no 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 that really did kind of change the landscape of who could be a rapper it did because it started to change the sound of how r&b was so once r&b starts to change and become more hip-hop in the way it's sang then you can have rappers doing the singy thing and you get your t-pains and then eventually you get your drakes and then that translates to your, your Doja Cats and, and Nicki Minaj and everybody to be more sing-songy in rap, okay? And I'm talking about if you really know your rap history and you know that that was like a, a moment when Beyonce did No, 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 the remix, and it had that sped up kind of more rap tempo to it. Y'all may not know that, but that's music history. Ain't nobody playing with y'all. Yeah, Bone Thugs and Harmony as well. Absolutely. Like, it's not to say that Beyonce, like, started this, especially in rap, but I do feel like it was something influenced for the girls. It was an influence for the girls with Beyonce and how R&B shifted. Because even Mariah Carey, Mary J. Blige, all of these people were already doing, like, a hip-hop R&B thing. But I do think hip hop and R&B as a whole is what lend itself to the rap we hear now, which is more sing songy than it used to be back in the day. If you ask me, the whole style has changed. And I do think Beyonce was a part of that style change. I do. Um, one of the main people that was really promoting a certain sound. Um, you know, when Destiny Child, yes, when Beyonce and Destiny Child did, no, 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 no. But yes, that's not to negate anybody else that had that same vibe, especially West Coast. West Coast had a has a huge sing songy vibe to their their hip hop, which is so funny that Bone Thugs and Harmony is not West Coast, but technically are considered a West Coast kind of group because of their swag, even though they're from right, like Philadelphia somewhere. Um, but anyway, we're all um. I'm going to just say, I feel like, yeah, I do wish Trina would have said herself. I do. I wish Trina would have said herself because to be clear, Trina absolutely, uh, I think, paved the way for the Southern girls who spit how she spits. Uh, especially the girls that come from Miami. Like, you wouldn't have had none of them hoes that's popping on the internet right now if it wasn't for Trina. Um, So I agree. I wish that Trina would have said herself. But I do think that was one of them times where Trina thought that if she said Beyonce, everybody would just leave her alone. And that's not what happened. So y'all decided, yes, bugaboo, you make me want to throw my picture out the window. Tell MCI to cut the phone poles, break my lease so I can move because you a bugaboo, a bugaboo. You know what I'm saying? Like it definitely changed like the landscape to like pop, hip hop music. And yeah, you know, yeah, okay, you, you got your Lauren Hills and the Fujis and all of that. You do. I'm not saying she was the only person to do it, y'all. I'm just saying, like Beyonce, when they they talked about this on a, a a documentary one time about when they did that, and how that really did start to change the landscape of how hip hop and R and B was being sang at the time. But uh, you know, they are uh, they from Ohio? Okay, good. I I don't know why I thought it was Philly. But I knew it wasn't uh, L.A. I knew it wasn't L.A. even though they have that that very like Los Angeles um, vibe to them. And that was because Easy and them was the ones that uh, signed them, right? Missy was a safe choice also. She was, but I think if we're talking about the... the <laughs> nobody wants to say who really did it. And to me, Kim... Kimberly is the is the only real answer that makes sense. I mean, in all honesty, Beyonce stole from Lil' Kim. Like, what do y'all, the fucking beehive? I don't know if y'all know, but the first beehive and the first queen bee was Kimberly, Lil' Kim. 
Okay. If there was anybody that made sex a part of the brand and the music and really took control of that, like pussy power in a rap, I'm sorry, y'all. It's always going to be Lil' Kim. I know everybody wants to act like because Kim didn't fucked her face up and she looked like the cat lady now that that's not what shit. But I'm telling y'all right now, it's going to always be Kim. It's Kim. Nobody wants to have this conversation. Nikki did not start it. She just was the most consistent rapper by herself for the for that decade. From like 2007 to like 2017, there were no other real black, you know what I mean, no no female rappers that were on her level. She was the only one. Yes, Kim had Barbie first as well. Kim made herself into a Barbie on the how uh the How Many Licks video, which is one of my favorites. I know nobody like but, uh, Little Kim is the beginning of this shit. That without Kim, there's no Doja. Without Kim, there's no Nikki. Without Kim, there's no Trina. Well, even though like Trina was around the same time. Kim had to be like the first one that really pushed the envelope with being over-sexualized. Okay? Titty out at the award show. She was the first person to really get into doing mainstream ads. Mac and, and all of the name brand fashion designers that wanted to work with Kim. Like, and that was after Biggie died. Kim capitalized off of, you know, being like the, you know, hip hop's, you know, queen bee or whatever. But like she capitalized off that shit. She absolutely made her footprint in fashion and in white people's, you know, famous world. Like, so at the end of the day, if, if Kim were not able to do the things that she did, there would be no Nicki Minaj. There would be no Megan Thee Stallion. There would be no Doja Cat. There would be no Young Miami. All the city girl, everybody that has been able to do those things and be accepted and be successful with their coochies out, you would not have been able to do it if it were not for Kimberly Jones. Okay? Because she was the first one to do it the way it was done. And to make it successful. And to make it mainstream. To be very clear. Nobody had made it mainstream to be that specific brand of over the top, over sexualized, in your face, pussy on the album cover rapper. Nobody had made it mainstream that successful until Lil Kim, Kimberly Jones. So at the end of the day, we can we can ask each other who really made it possible, who influenced everybody. I feel like Kim came first with that influence. And I feel like Trina really was like one of the artists back in the day that kept that same vibe going. Back in the day, you know, it was only a few hand, it was a handful of girl rappers at the time, early 2000s. You're talking about like 90. I want to say like 95 to maybe 2000 who were like constantly making music and really at the top of their game. You had Missy, you had Kim, you had Eve, you had Trina. At that point, the brat was in and out, but the brat had most of her shit early 90s to mid 90s. And then she was kind of out of it and would come in and out. You get a whole lot of Tyrese, you know, as the years went on. But essentially, the people that was making, I want to say that in that time frame between like 95 and maybe 2006, I want to say had at least four or five albums. You're talking about Missy. You're talking about Trina. You're talking about Kim. You're talking about Eve. That was it. That was it for the, for the rap girlies that was really, you know what I'm saying, like doing some shit and making hit numbers and on the radio and all of that. Then. They slowed down, and then there was Nikki. And then it was just Nikki for like this, for like a 10-year period, from like 07 to 2017. And then right around 2018, I felt like, you know, this when you get Cardi and Megan and, and the City Girls and, and, you know, this new rush of girls that we have now. But that started right around 2017. Before then, of course, you had girl rappers here and there, but nobody mainstream and nobody popping like that. And at the end of the day, everybody is recycling shit that Lil' Kim did in fucking 96. 
Like <laughs> between 95, 96, and 97, everybody is basically recycling shit that Kim did from the wigs to the furs, you know what I'm saying, to the pussy talk, all that shit. So, you know, until y'all ready to give it up to who it's really for, you know, we can keep pretending, you know, like it's Beyonce. We could pretend like it's Nikki. We could pretend, you know, we could do that. But honestly, I feel like it's always going to be, you know, Kimberly and Katrina when it comes to like the sexualized rap. Um, Trina claps back at people who didn't like her calling Beyonce the number one female rapper for the dusty for the dusty, crusty, funky bitches in the back. Beyonce is the queen of rap when she raps and all other genres of music. Now stay mad, goofies. I said what I said. Ain't that bitch gonna check me. Carry on. Ah, give me my check. Put some respect on my check. I'll pay me a negwity. That's the reverse of the day. Skirt, he got a babbage, babbage. Even lavish, lavish. Got expensive fabrics. Got expensive habits. He wanna roll with me. He like to roll away. He wanna be with me. He wanna give me that vitamin D. Ice cone, girl, that was my shit. Eh, 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 eh. Yeah, I heard y'all completely fucked over Future. That nigga said Future wrote that shit and, and gave it to somebody and then never saw the song again. Now that I have y'all undivided attention, I'm actually late to the party because I wasn't aware of this nonsense happening today because I'm too busy minding my business. Let me just make myself clear once again. Since it's a slow day for the blogs and bullshit, it was a slow day. This interview was back in October at the One Music Festival. I really don't give a rat's ass how anybody feel. I said what I said. That's what the Queen B. Um, that's the Queen B, and I'm gonna stand on that. Beyonce is the queen of rap when she raps and all genres of music when it comes to me. Go argue with the IRS or somebody else. I don't care. And that's not up for debate over here. So we're bitch, I would have preferred you say yourself. I would have preferred you say yourself. What's the real problem? My choice, my opinion of who I said the queen is. The fuck y'all think this is? I don't fucking cope. <laughs> now, please leave me alone. I hate coming on here talking to y'all. Bye. And then the, the people wanted to post back when she did a Nicki Minaj tribute. She says, yes, came through and slayed it. Since that's the thing, I don't have any problems with nobody. I'm probably the only female artist that's always show love to all female artists. No jealousy, no insecurities over here. I'm actually your favorite fave, fave. Don't let that go over your head. Joke's up. I'm not going to let it go over my head because I know good and goddamn well you influenced this bitch. The fuck? Everybody can keep acting like Trina wasn't killing it in the early two. And then y'all want to know how Trina really influenced y'all hoes? Y'all want to know how Trina really influenced y'all hoes? Trina's ass is real. And Trina was the first female rapper who their ass became a part of their brand. Whoop, whoop, pull over that ass too fat. Trina was all up and through everybody's songs for her natural born body. She made it a thing for the girls to be thick. She made it a thing for the girls to have ass. Please don't get it confused. Katrina, you need to you need to give yourself more credit, my girl. You need to give yourself more credit, my girl. And everybody can play like they don't know. But there was a point in time where Trina was a, a point of entry for people in the in the community, in the in the industry, in the black sector of entertainment. Trina was a point of entry for some people. The Kardashians, how they really started to get the eyes of black people. It wasn't just Ray J. It was them hanging around Trina. I don't know if anybody remembers that shit. I do. I remember how I didn't know who the fuck and didn't give a fuck until them hoes started hanging around Trina. And this was right around the, Trina, the time where Trina and Lil Wayne were together. And you would see Chloe and them and, 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 uh, and Kim Kardashian hanging around Trina. Then all of a sudden, Chloe's fucking uh, uh, French Montana or some shit like that. Now we ain't friends no more. We didn't fell out. Now y'all didn't moved on from Trina. But essentially, everybody tries to act like, you know, because Trina has her moments of being ignorant, like, you know, people be, that she still hasn't been like a huge, huge cultural influence for the girls. And when it comes to the body, she absolutely has been that. Y'all better stop playing with her, but she got to put more respect on her own fucking name before anybody else do it. I'm going to just keep it a book. But hold up. Let me see, because I wanted to see, because Bobby Lights was in a wig 
very upset, girl. Very upset. I was like, what is Bobby going through? Lyric was like, is Bobby transitioning? I was like, I don't think so. I don't think Bobby's transitioning. I don't think so. Let me see. Was it on this post? Was Bobby on this post? No, I thought I saved it. Oh, here he is. Girl, Bobby be going through it. Bobby really got on live with that wig on and went off. Like, Bobby must have been on some drugs. I know I can't talk, but still, like, I don't know about that. Followed her almost two years ago for her showing love to another female rapper. Your fave is not a girl's girl. Trina, on the other hand, is a girl's girl. Trina don't give a fuck. Matter of fact, Trina don't give a fuck about any of the competition right now. Trina honestly did what she needed to do years ago. She went platinum. She went gold. She did what she needed to do Bitch. years and years and years ago. When you had to sell cassettes and teeth and, and CDs. Y'all remember Specs Music Store? Yeah, no, for real. Trina sold out when it wasn't that easy to sell out. Y'all remember the CD stores? You, you would go in and you remember the... You remember when albums used to drop? Lil' Kim, Eve, Missy Elliott, Trina, when they... In the industry, Trina is a girl's girl if you are on her level and above. If you below her, I don't know about that. She's nicer than Nikki, but I don't know if you can say she's a girl's girl for real. Because sometimes it feels like she's a mean-ass bitch to me. I don't know. They would drop, people would be lining up in Target... In the stores, in the malls, in the CD stores, in the, in, in, in the um, wherever the fuck they sold CDs to line up and get that CD, and then they'll get an autograph, it'll get a sign. Yeah, she was pushing units then. I'm talking about two hundred and twenty-eight thousand first week. Okay, I'm on T. So, I think what it is is y'all mad. Trina's not impressed, or Trina's not. Kissing nobody's ass the way y'all expect her. Why the fuck would Trina kiss anybody's ass? I don't know. And I'm never going to mind my business. Okay. And I'm going to always put my two two cents in. Okay. And I'm going to always speak my motherfucking mind. You should. And I'm going to always wake it up. You should. I'm going to stop it right there. Just stop coming to us looking like that. Okay, so y'all, we're going to take one more break. And then we're going to come back. And we're going to finish this off with Eminem and Kevin Hart. Okay. Girl, Bobby. Okay, y'all, I'm back. I had to take my sweatshirt off, y'all. It's getting, getting warm up here. So, y'all, the Green Eye Bandits are back at it. Neighbors, get into this. Shout out to Kyle. Earlier this week, we told y'all about the trademark lawsuit Eminem filed against Giselle Bryant and Robin Dixon for their podcast name, Reasonably Shady, because it was too close to his alter ego name, Slim Shady. Fast forward to now, Eminem is filing a protective order against the ladies because he doesn't want to show up to court for the deposition. But Giselle and Robin are insisting that he show up. According to page six, Eminem real name Marshall Mathers claims that he has limited knowledge about the dispute. So he shouldn't be forced to come to court and sit for the deposition because it'll be unduly burdensome. In the motion, he adds that his manager or two other people he trusts attend on his behalf since they know more about the dispute than he allegedly does. Because his business, 
His lawyer and his business managers are the people that are responsible for making sure that nobody is infringing upon his trademarks. That's what they're being paid to do. So, of course, he shouldn't have to show support for this. Giselle and Robin just want to feel important. It's almost like a clout chase. Like, oh, you're going to sue us. Then you need to make sure you come to court so we can make a moment out of it. That's what it feels like to me. The motion states that because Gis Giselle and Robin insist that he comes to the deposition, he is getting a protective order. So it will be impossible for him to go. Smart. The ladies have yet to respond to this motion. We have to wait and see if the judge approves the protective order or not. Child, this is definitely shady. It is. It is. You guys, uh, listen, I'm kind of caught in between because I do feel like it's not the same name. Reasonably Shady and Slim Shady are not the same name. Um, I don't know if he trademarked the word fucking shade, like shady by itself. I don't know. But I do feel like I don't know if he should be able to win this. But I don't think he should have to come to court either. I don't think he should have to come to court either. I think they're trying to use it for a moment. And I wish they would just move on. And if they can afford to fight him, then fight him about it. Fight his business partners about the situation. But ultimately, girl, when I tell y'all I want Robin and Giselle to get all the way the fuck out of our face. I want them to get all the way the fuck out of our face with this. Girl, listen. Just have your lawyers handle it. His lawyers are probably going to kill your lawyers. You trying to get him to come to court seems like you just trying to get some clout off the situation. Maybe something so that you can have a storyline on that raggedy ass show where you don't have nothing else going on but being colorist and, and disagreeable and disgusting and gobble necked. With Robin sitting on the fucking curb because she's gobbling down Juan Dixon's cum juice. Girl, anyway, let's move on. So, y'all, I wanted to talk about the Kevin and um the Kevin and Tasha K situation because I told y'all that when I read the story, it did not make sense to me that Kevin's people would assume that Tasha was extorting him because she teased an interview. I explained that I don't think that's extortion because essentially Tasha. Once she posts on her social media page that she's going to do an interview, that fucking interview is coming out. Nobody's wasting time. Nobody's wasting time shooting an interview. Cameras, lights, being in L.A. for however long she was in L.A. shooting all these interviews that she had to do. But that costs time and money to shoot those interviews with those people. Whether y'all agree with what she does or not, motherfuckers is showing up to read the content. They're, they're showing up to listen to the interview. I watched the whole interview with her and Kevin Hart's assistant, and I believe everything that Kevin Hart's assistant said. I do. I do think that Kevin likes to play games. I do think he likes to go fast and loose. <laughs> okay. Um, and it does seem as though for some reason he wanted it to seem, I'm going to tell you what it is. I don't know how Kevin Hart's sex tape got to the internet. I don't understand how. But from what I understand, it is believed that Kevin recorded that video. And so in order to, I guess, make himself not look as bad, he tried to make it seem like somebody was extorting him because if they're extorting him, that's a victim of somebody just, you know, taking advantage of him in a private moment. Yeah, he's making a mistake, but that's between him and his wife. And if his wife forgives him, then we can't be upset at him about cheating. But if somebody's extorting him, then we have to defend him, right? Right. I think that might have been the idea, but he accused his friend JT of extorting from him, right? It's trying to get money from him for that sex tape. Well, apparently that wasn't true. And this is the messages between JT and Tasha, because back then Tasha said that Kevin was on bullshit with the extortion, that it didn't make any sense. We also know that Kevin has gotten into car accidents, driving while drunk, and miraculously switched seats with the person. I remember we talked about that, and that shit was suspect. So it do seem like Kevin be out here being... JT did. Okay. But JT Jackson says it was a fake extortion plot. So 
for them to now be trying to sue Tasha, which seems to be like a low hanging fruit thing to do for a man like Kevin Hart. You want to come and sue Tasha over cheating and, and come stains on sofas. No, it's probably about this extortion shit coming out and, and, and more problems coming to Kevin. See, I didn't realize when Kevin did that, didn't want to apologize for the gay shit that he said on Twitter in 2010. When he didn't want to apologize and all of that for that, he lost a lot. He lost Nike. That's why he's with Fabletics now. He, you know, he went through a real hard time with that. So now I feel like he's trying to stay out of bullshit because he's tried, you know, tried to learn from that. But I still think he's cheating on a Nico. I think that's just a normal thing for a rich, famous man to do until he's too old to cheat. He's going to cheat. And Nico knows that. Um, I believe everything the assistant said. She just was too, too specific, too on point, And it made too much sense. So ultimately... I feel like Kevin probably wanted this to stay quiet. But to me, what I read in the article was that Kevin felt like Tasha didn't have a right to post this interview, which she does. I'm sorry if you don't like it, but she has every right as a journalist, as a national inquirer type YouTuber, whatever the fuck you want to call it, messy blogger, whatever you want to call it. Legally free press. She can sit down with his assistant. His assistant can say, whatever she feels comfortable saying and Tasha can put it out. She doesn't have to ask Kevin Hart to do a story about him. I don't know what Kevin got that from. So Kevin saying to her through his lawyers that she doesn't have the right to do a story about him. Nigga. Yes, she does. The fuck are you talking about? That's like telling me I can't talk about something on the blogs. or I can't talk about something that's come out in the news. Yes, I can. As long as it's already come out and it's already been proven to be true. Are we talking about facts? Ain't nobody lying on you? Fuck are you talking about? Extortion sounds like bullshit and it sounds like something that Kevin it, it has done in the past. Because we've never heard of, 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 of Tasha extorting anybody. Now, once I paid to be in LA to film an interview, to put an interview out, I call you to ask you for your side of things and you tell me that I'm, I shouldn't put the interview up. And I tell you, well, if you don't want me to put the interview up, you need to pay me for how much it costs for me to shoot the interview. Plus how much I would have made off the interview. If you don't want to pay me in order for me not to put it out, I'm putting my content out because I've already spent the money recording the interview. Do y'all see what I'm saying? Do y'all see what I'm saying? And there may be a case against the assistant because she violated the NDA. But again, that's not Tasha. That's the assistant. And they say she is included in the uh, in the lawsuit, but he's suing Tasha for extortion. And I don't believe that that's technically extortion. I, I don't think that's technically extortion. You don't want me to do the story. I'm telling you that you would have to pay me in order to supplement me not putting a story out that would make me this amount of money. So if you're not going to pay me to, and, I, and this is what I'm saying, I don't think Tasha was ever going to not put that story out, but it's almost like, nigga, if you don't want me to put the story out that bad, then pay me not to put it out. Because I didn't already pay to be in LA. I've paid to shoot it. I've paid for the girl to come out here. Like, I've already spent money on this interview. And I can legally put this interview out. And if you don't want me to, then pay me for what I spent in order to supplement me not putting it out. If you're not going to pay me to keep the interview from coming out, then I'm going to put the interview out and make my money off of it. The fuck? That's not extortion. Uh, extortion would have been coming to you from jump saying, oh, I got this T on you and I'm going to put it out unless you pay me this amount of money. That's not what happened. She probably called his people to get their rebuttal on the interview. And he like, I don't want you to do the interview. The fuck? This is what she does. And I really feel like in this business, that's what people do. Like a lot of the blogs are paid to not put certain stories out. I even think some of the blogs are on retainer 
to catch stories and hit the people up ahead of time so that they could like, you know, try to, uh, uh, you know, Olivia Pope the situation, get ahead of the story. This is a business. Just like people are being paid to tell stories, people are also being paid to keep stories quiet. Yeah, it, it's not blackmail. It's yeah, extortion is a fancy word for blackmail. It's not blackmail. That's how I feel. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, I know everybody wants me to go in on Tasha and y'all feel like I'm not being real and all of that, but no, I'm going to be smart, first of all. I'm going to actually look at the situation. I'm going to actually read the fucking story. And then I'll come up with my assessment of how I feel. And I'm sorry. On this one, I feel like Kevin is doing too much. Kevin is trying to seek revenge on somebody because there's more he probably doesn't want to come out. Tasha even said that there's a whole bunch of receipts and everything. She said that shit that happened last time will never happen again. She has proof and receipts for everything that they're talking about. I think she's crossed her T's and dotted her I's ever since the Cardi B situation. So, yeah. Um, we'll just have to see how this all plays out. But Tasha doesn't seem worried. And usually when Tasha doesn't seem worried, I don't worry either. <laughs> I'm just keeping it a buck with y'all. Okay? <laughs>